Welcome to Mode Bespoke, I'm Atenas. For today, we're gonna to be crocheting a pair of Tunisian crochet socks in the round. Now let's get started. Here's a look at the pattern we're gonna be working on today. Now, these socks are made with a Tunisian crochet, and I wrote the pattern in such a way that you can make a tube sock or an ankle sock, so you'll be able to decide what size of sock you wanna make. You can also make this sock in any size you want, whether it's a newborn size to an adult size, you can make it in any size you wanna make it in. Don't forget to check out the written pattern, which is available on my blog. You can find the PDF copy of the pattern, which includes photos, notes, tips, and a whole lot of other information on my website. I'll leave a link in the description box below. So for sizing, you really can make these socks in any size you want. You're gonna need the measurement, however, so you can either measure your own feet or you can use the Yarn Council's measurement chart, which I'm gonna link down in the description box below. Now, they have a couple of different measurements on there and you're gonna need all of these to create the socks. The first one is going to be the sock circumference or your foot circumference, and that's usually the wide part of your foot just below your toes. Now, like I said, you can use the measurement that's suggested on the yarn council's chart, or you can take your own. You're gonna use this measurement for the cuff as well. So it's gonna be the same measurement for both. The next measurement is gonna be the sock height. Now this one, again, is just a suggestion, but it's just how high your sock is gonna go. So it's just the leg part. Then lastly, you're gonna have the total foot length measurement. That measures between your heel to your toe. So the chart is listed as US shoe sizes. If you don't have a US size, just Google it. Um, you'll find a conversion chart somewhere online. All right, now for construction, we're gonna begin at the cuff. So we'll begin our pattern up here at the top. We're gonna to work our way down the sock height and then the heel and then the body of the sock and finally finish on the toe. Now let's go over some of the supplies. And first of all, we're gonna start with our hooks because this is a very important part. You're going to need double-ended hooks. The hooks I'm using, which are the ones that are linked below, are these ones. I know they are not Tunisian crochet hooks. They have two different sizes, so they have three on one side, four on the other. But I like these hooks because they're not very long, so it makes crocheting socks a lot easier. They also have this center part, and the center part's gonna help loosen up the tension of our stitching, so it's gonna help make for a more stretchier fabric, which is what we're going to need in order to have daily wear socks. So these are the hooks I use. I'm going to use size three, four. I'm going to link these below. You can get them on Amazon. They come in a set of eight. Just make sure that you use the three, four one for this pattern. If you do have a double-ended Tunisian hook, use the three millimeter hook. So the shorter the hook, the easier it's going to be for this pattern. All right, so moving on to the yarn. I'm using this yarn. I know I use it a lot but this is a wool-like yarn. Um, you will need either a fingering yarn or a sock yarn. So the sock we're gonna be making today is this pink and I guess it's kind of beige sock. So I'm gonna use two different colors. You are gonna need to use two different skeins, two different balls, whatever, however you wanna buy your yarn, but it does have to be a size one fingering yarn or a sock yarn. Uh, this one I'm using is an acrylic and nylon blend, but you can use any blend that you want so long, it's the, so long as it's the same size as the one I'm using. If you do get this yarn, you will be able to make several pairs of socks with just these two little balls of yarn. We're also going to need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, a measuring tape, and optional you can use a stitch counter or a row counter as well as about two stitch markers. So to make this pattern, you need to know how to crochet a Tunisian knit stitch, a purl stitch, and an extended return pass. Got quite a bit of information to cover in this tutorial, and this is also a bit more of an advanced project. If you are unfamiliar with any of those stitches, I will put links in the description box below. You'll learn how to do the knit and purl stitch in my Tunisian 101 video, and I made a separate video for the extended return pass. Once you are familiar with those stitches and you can crochet them without, having, without me having to explain them, then you know you're ready to create this project. All right, so check out those links below if you need them. Now for the rest of us, let's get started here with our sock. So I'm gonna be making these socks. It's gonna have the shorter cuff just to make it a little bit quicker to get through this project. So begin with the first color you wanna use, whatever color you want for your cuff. No matter what size sock you are making, we're gonna begin with a chain three, which is gonna be the width of the cuff, and we're gonna add rows to create length. Now the rows is where 
you're going the size of your sock is going to make a difference so let's begin first with our chain three leave a nice long tail end of yarn you're going to use this to sew your cuff together so you're going to when you sew it in the round so leave a nice long tail end make a slip knot see here i'm using the side four on this double ended hook so if you're using just a regular tunisian double ended hook you can use that same hook that's okay all right so we begin with a chain three so we've got one two three and now we're going to cast on two stitches so we're going to go into that second chain from your hook and we're going to insert our hook into that stitch so skip the first one insert your hook into the second stitch you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop so we're going to cast on a foundation row we're going to repeat this in the last chain of the row so that you have three loops like this on your hook now you're going to work a regular return pass so for the regular return pass you just yarn over pull through one and then you're going to yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two so that was our foundation row now we're going to begin with row one and this is going to be the beginning of our row count we need to create rows that equal multiples of four that's going to give us the length we need for our cuff so let's begin with our first row we're going to skip the first vertical stitch and we are going to knit stitch into that second vertical stitch so the centermost vertical stitch so i'm just going to insert my hook and knit stitch and you're going to knit stitch into that final stitch of the row so that you've cast on your loops you've got three and then you just work a return pass and this is a regular return pass now that we've completed row one we're going to go row two and we're just going to cast on two knit stitches and work a return pass and then we do row three and four so for your multiples of four just keep counting one through four make sure you jot down how many multiples you do or the number of rows you crochet the reason you need to work in multiples of four is because of the pattern that we are working so we're going to be working two knit stitches and then two purl stitch all the way around the cuff once you've completed your cuff it should look a little like this now the sock i'm making is for a five-year-old kid so i made 36 rows and that was my multiple of four and now we have to close the cuff if we take a look at the cuff it's got two different sides so here's the stitching on one side and then if you turn it around it looks a little bit different so just pick the side that you want on the outside of the cuff so see i got the one that looks more ribbed but you can use whichever side you prefer all right so we're going to remove our hook and then we're going to grab a stitch marker and place it here on this loop that way we don't have to cut our yarn and make one more tail end to have to weave in later so let's just leave this attached we're going to grab our yarn needle and we're going to thread this long tail that we left at the beginning we're going to thread that through and we're going to use that to sew our cuff closed that way we can start working in the round and this will be one of the few seams that you'll have on your sock project so fold your cuff so that you have whatever side you want on the outside so i wanted the ribbing on the outside of my sock so i'm going to fold it so that the ribbing is on the outside and then i'm just going to sew the narrow end of the cuff closed just like you're seeing here you can use any stitch you want the goal is just sew this part closed once that is sewn just make sure that you have the side that you want on the outside that that is what is facing the outside of your work now i'm going to remove my stitch marker i'm going to put my hook and i'm going to use side three and now we're going to add this loop onto our hook so this is going to be the loop for a return pass now we're going to need our second color so i'm going to be casting on my foundation row into all of these ribbed stitches and from here on out we are going to be working in the round so for this next part of the sock which is going to be the sock height or the leg part of the sock we're going to have to cast on using our second color so i'm going to use this rose color i'm going to leave a nice long tail end of yarn make a loop on my on my hook and cast on one and now i'm just going to insert my hook into all of the stitches along the top edge of the cuff so right around here 
and I'm just going to cast on one loop per stitch. I'm only able to cast on about 20 stitches before I can no longer comfortably cast on any more stitches. Once you get to this point, I'm going to use my little uh, row counter or stitch counter. I'm going to put, what is it, 25 because I cast on 25 loops. And then I'll begin working my return pass so I can pull all of these stitches off of my hook and then have enough space to cast on the remaining stitches. So as you can see, you can only cast on about half of the sock at a time. To work our return pass, we have to turn our work around. So now we're going to be working with the back hook. And this is the f hook number four, if you're using the same hooks as I am. We're going to slide all of our work closest to that back hook. And now we're ready to begin. We're going to use this back thread to crochet our return pass. And it's going to be an extended return pass. For the extended return pass, you chain one and then you're going to yarn over and pull through two loops. So there's one, two. So to repeat, chain one and then yarn over, pull through two. Chain one, yarn over, pull through two. And chain one and yarn over, pull through two. So as you can tell, this is different from a regular return pass. This is going to give us a stretchier fabric. And if you need more information about this particular return pass, uh, I suggest you watch the video tutorial I made specifically about an extended return pass and why it's a good technique to have when you're working with Tunisian crochet. I'm going to continue working on this return pass, but I'm not going to remove all of the loops from my hook. I'm going to leave about three, so anywhere between two to three loops of the pink yarn, so color number two, we're going to leave those on our hook. So now turn your, your work around and continue to cast on stitches. I left off at stitch number 25. So now the next stitch I cast on is going to be stitch number 26. Then we got 27, 28, and so forth until I've cast on one stitch for every row of my cuff. I should have the same number of stitches as I did multiples of four. So my cuff was 36 rows. So I should have cast on 36 loops all the way around. So that's why having a stitch counter is going to be a little bit easier for this project. All right, so let's add some sock height. So for this, since the cuff on this sock is a little bit small, I'm just going to show you here with this one that's a little bit longer. Now our pattern here is going to be two knit stitches. So we have two knit and then two purl, followed by two knit, two purl, so forth and so on, so that you have the same pattern going all the way around your sock. Makes it a little easier for you. You can complete the return pass. I still got a little bit of space, so I'm just going to continue working through, but I'm going to need a stitch marker. You can also use a safety pin if this is easiest for you. So I'm going to place a stitch marker just to tell me where my row begins and ends. Because from here on out, since we're just working in continuous rounds, it's going to be a little difficult to keep track of where our row begins and to keep track of our row numbers. So right here on this little chain, I'm going to call it a chain, but right before the first stitch of the round, we're going to place a stitch marker. So right there. See, it kind of looks like a chain too that you normally do at the beginning of a project, but that's where we're going to place our stitch marker. Let me switch my ring here. So now we've completed our first round. Now on our second round, which is actually going to be round one on the pattern, because the one we just did is our foundation round, we're going to begin the actual pattern itself. So we have to begin with a knit stitch. So beginning on that first vertical stitch, we're going to do a knit stitch. In the next stitch right here, we're going to crochet another knit stitch. And then the two stitches right after that, so here are my two vertical stitches, you're going to work those as a purl stitch. So just a quick review on that purl stitch, you're going to do a reverse yarn over so that your yarn is in front of your hook. You're going to hold it down, insert your hook into the stitch, release the yarn, and you're going to pull it under and behind your hook, and then just do a regular yarn over and cast on a loop. And then you're going to purl stitch in the next stitch. And remember that if this is a little bit too fast, check out that Tunisian 101 video where I show you how to do the purl stitch in a nice slow way and it's just kind of step by step. All right, moving on. So for the rest of the round, we're going to repeat the pattern we just started. So we're going to do two knit, two purl. And you're just going to work this in sets 
all the way around until you get to your stitch marker again. So for our next two stitches, we're going to work two knit. So there's one, and the next one is a knit. You're going to follow it up with two purl. So here are my two next stitches. That's going to be two purl stitch right here. So there's one purl and two purl. And then we have two knit. So knit, knit, purl, purl. And you're going to continue this pattern until you get to the stitch marker. So let me work my way completely around. Remember that once your hook is full, you're going to turn your hook around and you're going to work your extended return pass. So you're going to chain one and then yarn over, pull through two. Chain one, yarn over, pull through two. You're going to do this until you have about two to three loops left on your hook. So this is the two or three loops of your yarn color two, which in my case is the pink one. And you're going to turn your work around the other way. Slide your stitches over to the front hook, which is the size three hook. And you're going to continue this same sequence. So we left off at two purl. So I'm going to pick up with two knit and then two purl and so forth and so on. So I'm going to continue working on this same pattern, so this same sequence, until I get to my stitch marker. So once I've worked my way around and I've reached the stitch marker, I've got two last stitches to cast on here. So these two are going to be my purls, and then here's my stitch marker, and that's the end of my round. So we got purl, purl, and there we go. I finished the round. Here's my stitch marker. We're going to flip this here on my row counter. And now we're going to begin row number two. Row number two is the same as row number one. We've already set up the foundation for our pattern. So we're going to begin with two knit, two purl, two knit. You're just going to keep working your way around. Now this is where you can select how high you want the sock height to be. So if you want this long tube here, you can just work lots of rows. I mean, I think I worked for this particular sock, I worked 28 rows. But for the short cuffs, so for this little ankle sock that I'm making, I'm only going to do five rows. So it's going to be a little bit on the taller side for the ankle sock. So I think it should have been about three for your average ankle, ankle sock for kids at least. But I wanted this to be just a little bit longer. Like I said, if you want a longer sock, just work more rows. So this is entirely up to you. But do write down how many rows you crocheted so that you can use this for your next sock. And just to give you an idea how tall this sock is, so this is for the 28 rows, it is about 5 inches, which is roughly, I think, 11 centimeters. So that's how high I made my sock, at least. But you decide how high you want your sock to be and just go with it. So I'll let you complete the rest of the sock height, and then I'll see you again to complete the heel. So a quick note here, once you've worked about 2 to 3 rounds, you're going to notice that the outside of your row is going to be a little bit wider than the inside. And this is totally normal. That is because you are working with an extended return pass, which is going to make the spacing between your stitches wider than the actual stitch itself. So as you add rows, so look at here, I didn't change anything. I just added more rows and I got the shape of the sock just fine. You're going to start noticing that the shape is going to look a little bit more like a regular sock at about row Okay, so now I'll leave you to complete the rest of your rows. Once you've completed all of the rounds that you want for your sock length, we're going to have to close the, the round completely. So we need to actually close this return pass. So I need to pass that one loop through the remaining stitches. So this is just going to be the same as the extended return pass. I'm going to get here to the first stitches of my round. So let's close these two stitches up, turning our work around. And then I'm going to work an extended return pass here on that stitch and on this stitch. And then to tighten up these pink stitches, I'm just going to pull on my yarn, but I'm not going to cut it. So we are done using the pink yarn. Just leave it alone. You're not going to touch it for a while. That way you don't have to cut your yarn, weave in more ends. And now we are going to work the heel. So for the heel, you need to remember how many multiples of four you did for the cuff. So for this sock, I did 36. Now we're going to need to do a little bit of math here. So we're going to divide those 36 rows, I guess in this case, so 36 divided by 2. That means I'm going to need to cast on 18 stitches because that is half of the stitches around. 
So whatever the stitch, is, the stitch number you have around, divide that by two. And I'm going to cast on 18. My heel, I'm going to work in knit stitch. I'm not going to work a purl stitch anymore. So we're done working with the purl stitch from here on out. The rest of the pattern is all worked as knit stitch. All right, so I'm just going to begin to cast on my 18 stitches. So here's what, three, four, five, 16, 17, and 18. All right, so I've cast on 18 stitches. That does not mean I'm gonna have 18 loops on my hook though. I've cast on 18 stitches, but because we've had a loop already on our hook, I'm gonna have a total of 19 stitches. So it's however many stitches you cast on plus one. So this is gonna be row one of the heel. Now for the heel section, we are gonna to have to work a series of decreases. So all of your odd numbered rows, you're gonna work straight across. On your even numbered rows, we have to work decreases. So let me complete this extended return pass. I'll get to the beginning here of my work and that'll complete row one. For row two, we have to decrease. Now, the number of rows you are gonna work depends on the size of your sock. Now to make this super, super easy, all you do is take the number of stitches we just cast on. So I cast on 18 stitches. So 18 divided by two would give me nine, which means I have to crochet approximately nine rows for my decrease. And I'll explain this a little bit more here in just a moment. Okay, so we finished row one of the heel. Row two is gonna be a decrease. For the decrease, we're gonna knit stitch two together. So let me switch my row, here we go. So now we're row two. And to knit stitch two together, we're always going to skip the first vertical stitch. We're gonna work on stitch number two and three. So skip one, two and three, we're gonna knit stitch together. So you're gonna insert your hook into that first vertical stitch, just like you would with a knit stitch. So insert our hook, and then you're gonna go directly into stitch number three. So into the vertical stitch number three, you're gonna knit stitch into that one. So there we go, you're gonna have three, I guess three stitches on your hook for the moment. You're gonna yarn over and you're gonna pull through both of those vertical stitches. So we've decreased our work by one stitch. So we've taken those two stitches and only cast on one loop for both of them. So now for the rest of the row, we're going to cast on a knit stitch. So just keep working knit stitches until you get to the last two vertical stitches of the row. So we're gonna knit stitch into all of these and then when you get to the last two knit stitches, you're gonna knit stitch those two together. And then you just have to cast on into the final stitch of the row. So let me see kind of where I'm at here. Uh, no, I think I've got three. Wait, hold on. No, I've got two vertical stitches. Okay, so here we are. So once you get to your last two vertical stitches, you're gonna knit stitch those two together. So, so just insert your vertical hook stitch, into the first here's stitch, the next one, like you would in a stitch right here is the final stitch of the row. So it's that one here at the end. So we have two vertical, and then we have that final stitch, which is right here on the side. All right, so knit stitch both of these together by inserting your hook into that first vertical stitch, just like we did here at the beginning of the row. So insert it like you would a knit stitch, and then insert your hook directly into the stitch right after that, also a knit stitch. And then you're gonna yarn over and we're gonna pull through both of those vertical loops, or not vertical loops, vertical stitches. And then you're just gonna insert your hook into that final stitch and cast on one. All right, so now I should have two less stitches on my hook, so two loops less. So we started with 19 loops. I should have 17 loops on my hook now because we've decreased at the beginning of the row and we decreased at the end of the row. We only removed one stitch on either side. So if I go through here, go and, okay, we've counted the loops, there's 17 loops. So I'm right where I need to be. So now I just need to complete an extended return path. And then once we complete that, we're gonna work row number three. Now row number three is similar to row number one. You're just gonna work all the way across. You're not gonna do any any uh, decreases. You're not gonna knit anything together. It's just gonna be one knit stitch for every vertical stitch of the row. 
So let me finish these really quickly because I don't have very many left. And there we go. Okay. So remember to always skip the very first vertical stitch of the row. And we're going to work into that second stitch. And we're just going to knit stitch all the way across. So all of your odd numbered rows, you're going to work a knit stitch in every stitch of the row. All of your even numbered rows, you're going to work a decrease at the beginning and at the end of the, of the row. And that's that knit two together. So here I'm just at the end. Let me make sure I get that last stitch of the row. There we go. We've cast on and I'll work a return pass. So continue working this same pattern until you reach that calculated row number that we did. So remember I did the 18 stitches divided by 2 and that gave me 9. So I told you I was going to have to work approximately 9 rows. That's just the easiest way to calculate this unless you like to count the loops on your hook in which case make sure that you count the loops on your hook until you have half of the stitches that you originally cast on. So originally we cast on 18 stitches. You're going to need to work until you have nine loops on your hook. So just to save that step, that's why I said work about nine rows. So I'm going to finish those nine rows. Remember to alternate between a decrease row and a regular row. And then I will see you again here in just a moment. All right, so I've worked a total of nine rows and now I'm going to need to add two additional rows. So that's why I told you to divide that number in half. So the number of stitches you had at the beginning Divide it in half, that's the number of rows you're going to do, plus you're going to add two rows right after By that. adding those two rows, you'll end up with the stitch count that you need on your hook. So I should end up with nine loops on my hook once I finish those two additional rows. So and this is the same for any sock pattern, doesn't matter what size sock you make. So let me finish this last stitch right here, and let's count our loops. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that's where we need to stop. So those two additional loop or those two additional rows make it so that I have the right loop number on my hook. So the right loop number is going to be half. So you need half of the loop number up here that you cast on originally in the first row of your sock. So I cast on 18 loops or 18 stitches. I need nine loops on my hook. Once I've completed those two additional rows, so remember I completed nine rows, plus two is 11. So I've got a total of 11 rows. Now I can begin working my increases. So now for the increases, since we've already done this math, we're going to have to just crochet the nine rows. You don't have to do these two additional rows because these are just the two center rows. So everybody has those two additional rows. So all you would need to crochet is nine rows of increases, and this is going to be increasing every other row. Okay, so let's increase. So if you take a look here at our stitch, we've got between the first and second vertical stitches, we have a chain. So it is right in here. You're going to insert your hook into that chain space to create your increase. So here, let me grab my hook, insert the hook into that chain space between the first and second vertical stitch of the row, right there. You're going to yarn over and cast on one. And that was your increase. That was it. Now the rest of the row, you're going to knit stitch into each of the vertical stitches. So let's do these really quickly because I don't have very many. So I'm just going to keep filming. There we go. Once you get to the end of the row, so complete that last knit stitch and between the last vertical stitch and the final stitch of the row, you have another chain space. You're going to need to cast on into that chain space. So insert your hook into the chain and cast on one. Don't forget to also cast on a stitch into that final stitch of the row. So it's going to be that chain right below the one we are currently in. So right here. That's the final stitch of the row. Insert your hook into that stitch and cast on one. And there we go. So now we should have added two loops to our loop count. That is the increase. And just to verify that we have the right loop count, let me just count here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Great, so we had nine loops when we were on row number 11, and now for row number 12, we ended up with 11 loops. So we have added two stitches to our row. So now you're gonna work your extended return pass, 
and now we are on row number 13. And for row number 13, I'm just going to work and knit stitch in every one of the stitches. So you don't have to increase, you don't anything on this stitch. So the rest of the remaining stitches of, or the remaining rows, sorry, not stitches, the remaining rows of my work, I'm going to alternate between the increase row and the regular row until I've completed nine rows. So 11 plus the nine rows, I need to get to row number 20. At the end of row number 20, I should have the same stitch count as I had at the beginning of the heel. I should end up with 19 loops on my hook. So I should cast on 18 stitches, but end up with 19 loops on the hook. So here we are now, I'm on row 20. I've got all of my loops are on my hook and I have a total of 19, which is exactly what I started with when we began our heel. You have to have the same stitch count in order to keep the sock size the, the size that you intended it to be. So we need to keep our stitch count throughout this entire project. So that's why it's very important to count your loops and just make sure that you are where you need to be as far as your loop count goes. Okay, well let me finish these last remaining stitches here. So it's just my last extended return pass. And then we can move on to the body of the sock. So here we go. Uh, now I've got one more. There we go. Okay, so once you finish your heel, I'm going to replace my hook with a stitch marker. There we go. And that way we don't lose our stitch here. So here is our heel. This is what it should look like now. Now we have to sew the heel together. So we're going to sew along the ends right around here. So fold it in half like this. You're going to line up the edges and you're going to sew. I'm just using a piece of this same yarn. So it's not incredibly long. It's maybe about five inches or so. Um, make a knot at the end and then you're going to sew the heel together. So just insert your needle into one of the stitches and line up the two corners. And we're just going to give it one quick stitch right here just to hold that together. Now the way I like to sew this, and you don't have to do it this way, you can use any stitch you want, is I like to sew right behind the crochet stitch. So you see here is where you would insert your crochet hook. If you were to be crocheting into these stitches, that is where I'm going to insert my needle, like this. So in on one side and out through the other. And I'm going to do both sides on their own. So I'm not going to sew them together in one go. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to insert my needle right here into that first stitch. So right through it. So in on one side, out through the other. I'm going to pull on through and then I'm going to work on the opposite side. So I'm going to find my stitch, insert my needle, see so go all the way through and then just pull my yarn through and then I repeat on the other side. So then I'm going to go here to the top side and sew and then I'm going to work on the bottom side and sew and then I'm just going to continue sewing until I get to the top corner of the stitch. So as you work you can tighten up your stitches. You can see that it's going to leave a really nice little seam so it's going to be a cute sock seam. But continue sewing until you get to the top part. So here we go. And I'm just going to poke my needle here to the back or the inside I guess of the sock. I'm going to make a double knot and then you're just going to weave in your ends. This whole process you're going to repeat this on the other side. So line up the corner, sew all along the seams until your heel looks like this. Make sure that you weave in your ends and once we're ready to continue remove your stitch marker. You're going to grab your hook on side number three. You're going to load here that loop so let's place it on there and I got to untangle my yarn real quick and we're going to pick up the pink yarn again. So we are going to go back to working in the round, which means we're going to have to work with our two threads again. So let me grab my pink yarn here, make sure it's not all tangled. And now for this part, it is very important that you maintain stitch count. So we started with 36 stitches. So if you remember, our original stitch count was all of the stitches that we crocheted onto the cuff. So my cuff was 36 rows around. So that's going to become 36 stitches that I need across. So this is going to create the body of the sock. For the heel, we use half of those stitches, which was 18, which means that the remaining 18 
we're going to have to cast on onto the top part of the sock. We're going to begin to cast on here on the heel. So let me grab this pink yarn. And we're going to begin in the stitch right after the loop that we are on. So if you see the loop that's already hooked onto my hook, we're going to start in the stitch right next to it. So beginning right in here, we're going to begin with a knit stitch. So there's one. We're going to go to the stitch right next to it. Two, three, four, we have 16. And then these last two at the end are always kind of tricky. But all right, there's 17. And right here is 18. Okay, so I've cast on 18 stitches, which is the same number of stitches I had originally cast on for my heel. Since I don't have a whole lot of room, I'm going to work that return pass just to get these stitches off of my hook. So let's get a little untangled. All right, and we're going to turn our work around, slide our stitches over, and then we're going to work an extended return pass. Once we've completed that extended return pass, we're going to turn our work back around and continue to cast on the remaining stitches. This part should be pretty easy. They're going to be really easy. Uh, the stitches are going to be really easy to see. So beginning on the next pair of stitches, which are my pearl, so right in here, I'm going to start casting on knit stitches. So remember that the rest of this pattern, you're no longer working any purl stitch. You're just working a knit stitch. So cast on one knit stitch for every vertical stitch of the front part of the sock. You should have the, the same number of stitches you cast on for your heel. So right here, I've got 16 stitches already on my hook. My last two stitches are kind of hidden. So make sure you look for those. They are going to be a little hidden. So count the stitches as you're casting them on. So there was stitch number 17 and here stitch number 18. There we go. It's a little hidden. All right. So I have cast on 18 stitches, which is exactly what I needed to do to have a total of 36 stitches. Once we've cast this on, we just continue working rounds in knit stitch. Now work however many rounds you need in order to meet that total foot length, sort of the total foot measurement from the chart. Stop crocheting rows about an inch and a half before you reach that measurement. So that's about 3.8 centimeters. So stop at about one and a half inches, 3.8 centimeters from meeting that measurement. You have to still crochet the toe part of the sock. So that's going to complete that rest, the inch and a half or 3.8 centimeters that are remaining on the length. Moving on, this next part, so it's the beginning of row two or round two, you're going to skip this part right here that kind of looks like a chain, but it's in your return pass color. Make sure you work into your knit color. So for me, it was that pink yarn. So I'm going to cast on my knit stitch on my first pink vertical stitch. There we go. And once you begin to cast on your stitches, it's just the first two or three stitches that are a little bit hidden. Once you begin to cast on, the rest of it is going to be really simple and you won't have this problem once you get to row number three or four. So once you've completed the body of your sock, you're going to leave that one and a half inches and we're going to begin the toe. So the toe is going to be done pretty much the same as the heel. So you're going to have to work with just the one color. So I've got two loops here because I was completing my return pass. So I'm going to need to leave just that return pass loop. So I'm going to turn my work around and I'm going to complete this extended return pass. So here's the one stitch and here's the other stitch. And I'm going to tighten my stitches by pulling on the pink yarn. And now we're not going to need the pink yarn anymore. So you can cut the yarn if it makes you, if it makes this work a little bit easier. You can also weave it in. So I'm just going to grab a pair of scissors and cut this. Make sure that you leave a nice long tail end of yarn. That way you have enough yarn to weave in. So let's cut that here. We don't need the pink anymore. And now let's work on the toe. So for the toe, make sure that you're in the center. So center it out right here so that your sock is divided between the bottom half and the top half. So, or the under part of the sock and the top part of the sock. You're gonna work two flaps and then we're going to sew them together. 
So like I said, it's very, very similar to what we did in the heel. Only we're going to do it as two separate parts and then sew them together at the top. So the first thing we're going to do is cast on the same number of stitches you did for your heel. So I cast on 18 stitches, which means I will, again, cast on 18 stitches. And I already have a loop on my hook. See, here it is. That's going to be loop number 19. So it's going to be 18 plus that one loop. So beginning on the stitch right next to where my hook is, we begin to cast on. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and 16, 17, and 18. All right, so here we are. I've cast on 18 stitches. I'm gonna have 19 loops because I already had a loop on my hook. Once I've cast this on, I'm going to do the same process I did for the heel. I'm going to work my return pass, and then for row number two, I'm going to work a decrease. So I'm going to decrease in all of the even numbered rows. I'm going to do the same number of rows that I did for the heel. So I'm going to work nine rows plus the two additional rows. So whatever that stitch count was divided by half, so 18 divided by half, which is nine. So I need to crochet nine rows and then I'm going to add two rows. So no matter what that row count was for you, make sure you add those two additional rows. So I'm gonna continue working on these nine rows. Now, if you need to review it again, just watch the heel part of the video. It's the exact same thing we did for there. So let me work on these nine rows and I'll see you again in a moment. All right, so here's the toe part that's already done. So this is my little toe flap. I did nine rows plus my two additional rows. That way I ended up with nine loops on my hook. And once you've completed your all of your rows, you're gonna cut your yarn, pull your hook and your yarn out, tighten that up. You can weave in this end if it makes it easier for you right now. But then we're gonna repeat everything we just did on the top part of our sock. So we're gonna leave a really long tail end of yarn. It's gonna be quite long so that you can use it to sew the sides. So I'm going to leave a few inches here, I don't know, maybe about five inches or so. And we're going to insert our hook into this first stitch right here. So it's the stitch right after the last stitch we crocheted for the front or the bottom flap, I guess I should say, the bottom flap of the heel. So here's that really, really long tail end. We have cast on one. And we're just going to continue casting on stitches. So that was one, two, three four, five, six, here we go, and 17 and 18. Okay, so the top part of the sock is not going to have 19 loops. We have cast on 18 stitches, but we're only going to have 18 loops. We didn't start with a loop already on our hook. We're going to continue the process the same way that we did for that back flap, only we're going to have one stitch less. So instead of starting with 19 loops, we start with 18. And instead of ending with my nine loops, we're going to end with eight. And that's totally okay. That's the way it's supposed to be. So once you've completed the series of decreases again, you should have two flaps that look like this. So you have the one that's the upper one, so the one for the top, and then for the part that's under the sock. If you haven't already done so, you need to weave in your ends. So here's this one right here, the one on the other side, and the pink one. Weave those in, but leave that long thread. So this one that we left for sewing, you're going to leave that. Once you've weaved in your ends, you're ready to sew. So I've already threaded my needle, and we're going to use that same stitch that we used for the, the heel part of the sock. So I'm just going to begin here on that first stitch along the side. And there we go. And then I'm going to go on the other side. So we're going to sew here. And there we go. Now, if your sock bunches up like this and you don't want that little tip kind of hanging out on the outside of your sock, just give it about two or three stitches towards the inside of the sock. And that way, when you tighten the stitch, so when you pull on the yarn, it'll pop those into the sock. So they'll be nice and hidden. And then just continue working your sewing along the side and then the top and then the remaining side of the sock. The tip that you hit on this side, you're going to repeat this on this other side. 
and then when you're done, make sure to double knot your yarn and weave in any ends. Since the side looks a little bit different than the top, as you can see, the way I sew the top is I just use the knit stitch as the stitch itself. So I just insert my needle behind the, each of the knit stitches, like that. And that's the stitch that I use to sew the top part of the sock closed. Really, you can use any stitch you want and it'll look just fine, but that's kind of what I use. Remember that the front part or the front flap of the toe has one less stitch than the bottom. So you may need to adjust that when you're sewing the top part of the sock. But just go through, finish sewing your sock, weave in all your ends, and then you're done. So that was our video tutorial for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I post videos every week. Don't forget to check out the written pattern for this project. It is available on my website. I'm going to leave a link in the description box below. Also check out my Instagram page. I've got lots of different photos of all the projects that we have been working on and that we're going to be working on here on the channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all again next week.